whether you're swimming in lava, running away from creepers, or just trying to break some chests quicker to get that sweet, sweet loot. There's going to be an item that will help you out in every situation and make your life so much easier. So here's my list of items that you should be bringing into the vault, starting with number one, Vault Apples. Now, Vault Apples are incredible in the vault, especially the first few that I've got here, because they give you power-ups and abilities that you wouldn't have otherwise, or you'd have to invest a bunch of skill points into. So my favorite is the Cobalt Apple. Now that gives you fire immunity, and full resistance immunity for two minutes. Now this comes in incredibly useful, especially early game, when you can just drop down into different rooms and not take any additional fall damage. And of course, it's amazing if you just wanna go skinny dipping in some lava. Now just be careful you don't let it run out, cause otherwise you'll die very quickly. Now hearty apples are also incredible because if you eat one, it will literally just give you an extra heart of health. Now these are temporary hearts so they won't get healed back up with things like leech and healing potions, but they're useful to get you out of a tight bind. And the best thing is, if you've got a gluttony charm, which you can get with the dark utilities mod, you can eat them so quickly that is actually faster than healing with healing potions. Now the other apples are also really useful but not quite as much as the others. So you've got jade apples which will give you extra haste levels, sweet apples will give you speed, pixie apples will give you jump boost and slow fall, power apples give you strength as you'd expect, luck apples give you luck, ghost apples increase your parry and golem apples increase your resistance. They're all very useful and the first three you will get in an absolute abundance as you're running through the vault. The last six you will need to craft yourself or get a little bit lucky in your loot, but they're all really useful to have. So don't go sleeping on your vault apples. Now this does extend to other vault power-ups like the candy bar and the power bar because having that extra boost of speed or a ridiculous amount of strength is going to be extremely useful, especially when fighting bosses or running out of time like I am now. Now, as you're running through the vaults, you're going to constantly encounter all of these chests. Now, the chests contain all of the loot you're going to want to take out of the vault with you, and you're absolutely going to need to find a good way of carrying these, because otherwise, you're not going to be able to get any loot from the vault. Now, when you're very first starting out, I'd recommend shulker boxes. They're just going to give you a bunch of extra space for you to put your loot in. But once you have some Beniatite, you're going to be wanting to make these arena crates. Now, arena crates are pretty much the same as shulker except they're twice as big. Twice as big means you can loot twice the loot or you can just bring half the amount. These are incredibly good if you've not got a bunch of boss crates yet. Now boss crates are just arena crates that you don't have to craft. You get these from killing the boss in the vault. Now the next two are more long-term solutions. So you've got backpacks, which can carry a bunch of items at low levels. And if you manage to upgrade your backpack massively, you get a ridiculous amount of space that you can use to loot the items. Alternatively, you can unlock danks. Now danks are a lot more expensive, but you can apply filters and they increase the stack limit. So even with a dank of this size, you can potentially hold thousands of items without even fully filling the dank. Set up a load of filters and you don't need to worry about your vault loot anymore. You can pretty much go up to a chest, break it, and then it will automatically all be picked up in your dank. And there it is. Now a quick add on to this, one of the best items that you can get that will allow you to pick up items more efficiently is the magnet. As you go around the vault, breaking chests, the magnet will pull everything into your inventory. And then if you've got your dank set up, it will automatically go into your dank as well. It will save you a lot of time running around and potentially losing loot to creeper explosions. So the magnet I would recommend as well as all of these storage mods, obviously don't bring them all in the vault at once, but having good storage and a magnet will help you so much in the vault. Now it's no good being able to loot the vaults if you can't actually get around them efficiently. And while dash and mega jump are gonna help you an incredible amount, there's one item that is often overlooked that you really should be looking into. And that is the Ender Pearl. Now the Ender Pearl is incredibly good for getting you across rooms quickly. You can just throw your Ender Pearl and then you'll end up at the other side of the room. 
Now do be aware that the Ender Pearl will give you fall damage if you don't have Elvish or a Cobalt Apple up, so if you are low level, you want to be really, really careful about this. And one of the reasons that Elvish is the best ability in the game is that it allows you to use Ender Pearls without worrying about any sort of fall damage. Now, you can also find these Vault Pearls, which will allow you to teleport around without taking any fall damage. Now, after a while, these will break. They do have a durability bar, as you can see, and if that goes to empty, you will break your pearl and not be able to use it anymore. If you've got them, great. If not, Ender Pearls are useful as well, especially once you've got Elvish. And if you do find yourself trapped in lava, you can just Ender Pearl, and then you're straight out of the lava. No need to worry about pillaring up or wasting your time trying to get out of the lava normally. I cannot recommend this item enough. Now, if you are completely against any form of fire resistance or lava avoidance, you can always turn the lava into obsidian with our next item, the infinite water bucket. Now, this pretty much does what it says on the tin. You can just infinitely place water. You can turn all of this into obsidian if you want. Now, just be a little bit careful with this because you can trap yourself under the obsidian and if obsidian has got water over it, it becomes even harder to break. So just be really careful using this in a lava room. Now where this item really shines are in rooms where there's an absolute ton of spawners, like a graveyard room. When you've got a bunch of mobs coming at you, you can just spam the water bucket and then you're fairly safe. You can still get hit occasionally, but you are pretty much safe in the water. Now, just be careful of where the water is flowing because you can end up pushing mobs into yourself, but this will give you a lot of breathing room. Now, another slight benefit of this is that it also updates any blocks that it comes into contact with, which means that if you've got weird ghost blocks, this should fix it. So if you don't want to get hit by a load of mobs, then the infinite water bucket is definitely something that you should get. It only costs one pog, so definitely worth looking into. Now the next thing on the list is one of the most powerful ones that you can possibly get, not to mention it's a lot of fun to use, and that is subscribing to the Hellfire Mage YouTube channel. That's right, we are so close to 2,000 subscribers, we've got vanilla Let's Plays, we've got community server streams, as well as just these lovely guides that I absolutely love making. Join the community, I love having you there. Shameless plug over. Now the next items are going to sound a little bit weird, but hear me out, I promise they're actually a really good item to bring, and those are iron blocks and carved pumpkins. Veteran Minecraft players will know where this is going, but we're going to be making iron golems. Now, they will happily just deal with all of the mobs for you. They will just go around and absolutely destroy everything. Now, I have tested these all the way up to level 100, and they can still hold their own at level 100 because they are so tanky. And especially with the recent Eternals nerf, they are going to do a lot of work for you. There is literally no cap to the amount of iron golems that you can spawn, so you can create an entire army of just iron golems going around killing all of the mobs for you. The only downside of Iron Golems is they will not drop Soul Shards for you, but they will drop Scavenger items. So if you are doing a Scavenger Vault, these become super overpowered, or if you just want them to protect you in the Vault because you're a little bit scared, it's okay to admit it, then they can absolutely provide a little bit of support for you. Just be aware though, as this creeper is showing, they don't kill creepers, so you're going to need to deal with creepers by yourself. Now the final items that we're going to look at are ones that are going to make you more efficient at breaking blocks and looting chests. So the first one is the Vault Paxel. Now the Vault Paxel is brilliant because it only takes 8 Beniatite and 8 Laramar to make, which means that you can make this super early in the game after only running a couple of vaults. Now what the Vault Paxel does is it acts as a pickaxe, a shovel and an axe all rolled into one tool, saving you needing to bring all three at once. Now, whether you're mining dirt, whether you're mining stone, or whether you're mining wood, this will do the job, and it will let you save a bunch of inventory space. This is your all-round go-to tool. Even at level 100, you're probably going to be using this because it is such a versatile tool, and until you get some of the very, very strong alternatives, then this is pretty much the most powerful thing that you're going to get. Speaking of the alternatives, the Atomic Disassembler is going to allow you to break chests super quickly, and you can unlock this from Mechanism. 
If you have a bunch of chests that you want to break, the Atomic Disassembler is going to be able to do this super quickly and makes it much more efficient to break chests than it does to open them and loot them. It does even better with Gilded Chests because you can just mine all of the items out no problem at all. Once you've got the Atomic Disassembler, you will never open a chest again. You will just break it, the magnet will bring everything into your inventory, and then it will get all organised into your danks or your other storage systems. Now the Terra Shatterer works a little bit differently. Let me hop over to a mine room to show you just how good this item is. The Terra Shatterer is an absolute beast in mine vaults because it just removes massive chunks of debris. Now if you just go around and start breaking blocks it's going to break huge areas of blocks for you and you can use silk touch with this as well to gather all of the items whereas the atomic disassembler you can't use silk touch with which is unfortunate but it kind of makes sense. So you can just run around breaking all of these blocks in a mine room getting all of the different ores and if you've got proper filters set up you're not going to fill your inventory with junk either and this is by far one of the most efficient ways to clear out a mine room potentially tied with a mining gadget. Honestly, this is a game changer. As soon as you get the Terra Shatterer, you're going to be able to loot mine rooms to their full potential and you will have more Benny a Titan Laramar than you know what to do with. But that's where we're going to leave it for today, everyone. If you did like the video, make sure to like it, subscribe if you're not already. I've been Hellfire Mage and I will see you next time.